Okay, I think this is the last session according to the schedule. And uh, my name is Shu Chao. Uh, I will. My topic is to introduce the log structure merge tree into Postgres. Okay, uh, and it, because this time is an online event, I'm the first time here. So please don't think that the the boy there in the picture that's it's me. Okay, I think I actually eat food very uh, gently. Okay, uh, so let's start. Uh, so, actually, I'm a first time here, so let me briefly introduce myself. I have uh, 80 years experience in deep events R&D. Uh, when I was a PhD student at the University of Waterloo, I worked with the uh, AWS Redshift team and the Facebook RocksDB team. And uh, currently, I'm out of a program with a bunch of friends to work on a new uh, storage engine based on a new data structure. And recently, we become a fan of Postgres uh, because because due to its extensibility, we really like this feature. Okay, so we can put our storage engine there. Uh, additionally, we really like the Postgres community. Once we ask some questions, uh, we can get an immediate response. Super cool. So let's start from uh, background, from bottom up. So usually, the storage engine is a uh, uh, bottom most part of a DBMS, and then it accounts for a big chunk of the performance for uh, simple queries. I'm not talking about joint queries, otherwise uh, the, the joint table will take a lot of time. Okay, and then uh, what is storage engine? In my view, it's an incarnation of a data structure. So the data structure is kind of a split of the storage engine. Then uh, you're putting some support uh, for multi-thread adding recovery, adding uh, right headlock to this data structure, um, and a bunch of other stuff, then it becomes a storage engine. Okay, uh, then uh, putting some uh, putting the optimizer on top of the storage engine, executor on top of the storage engine, parser on top of the storage engine, then become an entire database management systems. So generally, we can find uh, several storage engines in the market. Uh, even like Postgres, it it it, uh, it, it has its own storage engine using B plus three, uh, and uh, MySQL InnoDB is using B plus three, and Berkeley DB, uh, Wild Tiger. I remember Wild Tiger using B tree. Okay, and then the another category of the storage engine is using the log structure merge tree. Uh, this this is relatively new. I mean, it, even the data, data structure is designed in the 1990s. Okay? Uh, so some famous storage engine is uh, LevelDB, uh, developed by Google, and RocksDB, developed by uh, Facebook. Uh, the core code of these two storage engines are quite similar. Okay? And uh, if I remember correctly, then the Chrome, okay, using the LevelDB. And so in, our, in, uh, in this talk, I will talk the uh, implementation of log structure merge tree uh, from uh, level DB and then rocks DB. Okay, because the original paper of log structure merge tree is quite vague to me in terms of implementation because there are, uh, it, 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 there are so many parameters to, parameters to tune uh, and many, there are many aspects can change. Okay, so we will put the uh, leverage uh, level DB and rocks DB as a spe specific example, uh, specific implementation of log structure merge tree. So let's start with a very simple experiment. The experiment is done in a very common hardware. Actually, it's my desktop. A, um, a very common CPU, average CPU, and uh, a disk, magnetic disk with 7,200 RPM. And the, the RAM size is 16 gigabytes, uh, DDR3. Okay, and, and, uh, but, but uh, uh, actually, we only using the 2.3 gigabytes around, uh, including the operating systems in all the experiments. Okay. Uh, and then the software, uh, we're using the standard uh, uh, data set size, um, uh, TBCH, 10 gigabytes. Uh, is specifically, we're using the line item table there. Okay. And we shuffled the line item, uh, line item table. Otherwise, uh, by default, it is generated uh, in the primary key order from uh, small to big. Okay, and then uh, we using Postgres 11.6 and the RocksDB uh, 6. 
and we haven't uh, done any tuning there. Uh, we, no matter for like uh, our implementation, storage engine self, or Postgres, we all use the default setting. Okay, and then we using the C plus uh, plus to access uh, uh, to access all all the systems uh, with the live PQ. Okay, uh, so for the I have to mention that for the live item table, uh, we build a B plus tree in post Postgres uh, uh, on the primary key there. Okay. Okay, so here is the experimental results. Okay, uh, we actually did both uh, one gigabytes and ten gigabytes. Uh, TPCH light item table in, uh, test and with three systems. The first system is uh, Postgres itself, and the second is the we uh, is the front end wrapper approach. We attach the uh, LoxDB to Postgres uh, via the uh, via the front end approach as indicated in the red bar here, and then we do the insurgent throughput via uh, directly. Uh, to the storage engine RockDB, and it, the performance results is indicated by the uh, yellow bar here. So um, apparently, that the Postgres performs poorly. Like the system performance drops sharply from one gigabyte to uh, ten gigabytes. Uh, then the storage engine is usually super, super, super fast one, and then the uh, a folder wrapper is kind of in the middle. Uh, even though the front end wrapper using the same storage engine, uh, RockDB, uh, then it's much slower than the uh, s uh, than the storage engine itself. Uh, this is because our implementation, okay, uh, not not mature yet. We're using some uh, synchronized uh, data transfer. Um, okay, and this can be improved. But uh, in this uh, in the analysis part, we will go through why the Postgres uh, performance drops a lot and why the uh, uh, front end wrapper uh, or the storage engine, LoxDB storage engine itself can uh, maintain a high throughput. So, uh, actually, why there's a huge difference, especially the uh, difference between the storage engine itself and the uh, Postgres, uh, especially in the 10 gigabytes. Uh, from my perspective, it's actually the data structure. Uh, the Postgres using uh, the B plus tree there. Uh, so what's wrong with the uh, B plus tree? Let's go a little bit deeper there. Uh, so let's first analyze the uh, B plus tree reading pattern. And there are two cases. So uh, firstly, the, the data comes in the primary key order. Uh, this is a rare, a rare case, okay. Uh, the second uh, case is the uh, common case usually like a data comes in and uh, in random order right uh, so so the graph here uh, with some rectangles especially in the uh, red rectangles uh, this means this this disk pages are cached so apparently we can see that in uh, the first case in the real case data come in the uh, sequence order and then uh, they will always go to the left branch of the B plus tree, and this branch just get uh, cached, okay, uh, in the RAM. In the random order case, uh, because it's kind of uh, random, uh, so every branch had to be cached in the cache, and if the cache is not large enough, then uh, this will uh, cause the eviction of the cache and uh, uh, reload, uh, page reload, okay. So we will start with some very uh, simple operations. Uh, so first is the put and delete. They actually correspond to some language in the SQL. Uh, uh, the put corresponds to like uh, insert and delete uh, corresponds to the delete, apparently. Okay. So uh, once a new tuple comes in, uh, first it will, it, firstly it will be written to the right hand log. And then a bunch of new tuples collected, then it will do a group commit. Uh, uh, the new tuple will uh, after the right, uh, writing to the right hand lock, it will go to the uh, multiple table, insert it in the multiple table, and then the multiple table reach to some threshold uh, say, uh, size, then the 
get uh, fro frozen and becomes an uh, immutable table uh, in order to uh, prevent uh, overflow of the RAM. Uh, so the, a background thread will be triggered uh, to flash the immutable table uh, to the disk. Okay, and so here I give an example that uh, a key value pair. So first, uh, there are some old, old key value pairs uh, with uh, key is equal to k and the value is 2019. Okay, uh, then we insert a new kv pair with key equals k and the value equals 2020. Okay, so immediately after inserting this new tuple, uh, this new tuple will invalidate, overwrite uh, the tuple with the same uh, key. So when you're doing a delete, it's simply uh, another version of put. Just uh, put the same key and uh, uh, with a now value there. So another primitive of the storage engine uh, is uh, uh, get operations, where users can input a key and the storage engine will return the corresponding value. And the get primitive uh, corresponds to the uh, SQL statement, uh, like uh, select star from the uh, table where the primary key equals to something. Okay, uh, so how to do the get operation uh, in the storage engine? So the first the storage engine will check is that uh, is the key located in the mutable table? Okay, uh, if if, if, if it's yes, it will return immediately. That's very fortunate. If not, it will go to the immutable table to check is there. If not, uh, it will continue to check in the disk level. Then it will go check the L0, each file in the L0 because uh, the keys are sorted inside the component, but they are not sorted across this component. And then it will go to the L1, uh, then go, go to L2, uh, okay. So this kind of uh, super slow, okay. So uh, they actually to overcome this uh, slow pr process. So actually, for the uh, implementation of RocksDB and the LevelDB, they also have a cache there uh, for the tuples uh, fetched from the disk. Additionally, uh, there has some called I, I call the tail index. This tail index. Um, is is something that's stored at the end of SST files. It it is generally like um, uh, min max, so it tells uh, the minimum value of the ST and the maximum value of ST. And it then if it doesn't have, uh, if the key is not doesn't fall into this category, then uh, we can just simply ignore that file. Okay, and the, the tail index can be loaded into RAM when the storage engine is opened. Additionally, you can put uh, the bloom filter in the tail index. To uh, speed up the process. Okay, so another important uh, operator is uh, iterator. Uh, users has to specify where the seek a seeking start point, and then using the next uh, operator uh, to do a read query. Okay, uh, so because the key value pairs are sorted inside the component, but they are not. Uh, uh, sorted across the different components. Okay, so uh, multiple iterations have have to be opened, uh, specifically for mutable table, immutable table. Every files, uh, acid files in the level zero, they have to be attached uh, iterator, and then the following levels in the disk, uh, there's only one iterate iterator is attached to each level. Okay, and uh, then each iterator they will select the uh, minimum value, uh, minimum key value, uh, as the first element to return to the uh, higher level. So in in this case that we can see that hey, uh, there are uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, there are seven iterators there, and each, each iterator they have a corresponding key. Uh, then the Minimum key is A, so it will return the A to the uh, to the uh, higher level, and then uh, the the selected iterator will move forward, and then continually they will select the minimum uh, element there. So it's kind of like a merging sort. 
Okay, now we come to the advanced operations. Actually, these operations are usually triggered by the background thread. Uh, so, uh, for something like uh, auto vacuum in Postgres, actually, uh, especially in the RockDB, it has multiple uh, threads, uh, a background thread to do flush and uh, compaction. So the purpose to uh, to trigger the flush is to prevent a memory overflow. So once the immutable table, there's an immutable table in the RAM, so it, the background thread will prepare to flush it to the disk. Uh, then the immutable table becomes an SSD file in the disk. So the, uh, the cool thing here actually for the insurgent test is that the immutable table actually is uh, written in a sequential order. So this is sequential writing. So it's pretty fast. Okay, this is a very good design of log structure merge I have to mention here. Okay, so uh, another important uh, advanced operation of the log structure merge is the compaction process. Uh, similar to the flash operations, it's uh, usually caught by the background thread. Uh, but it's different from the flash operations. It uh, totally occurs in the disk uh, part. Its responsibility is to push the files from the upper level, uh, from the uh, uh, small level to the big level, okay, uh, from L0 to L1, from L1 to L2. Uh, the purpose of to trigger this compaction process is to improve the read performance. We can think of extreme case that every file gets pushed to the bottom most level, uh, the L2 there, so so that so that uh, you know the key value pairs. Uh, uh, can be sorted, okay, uh, across the entire disk, okay. So this the imp the read performance can get improved. So people say that hey, the log structure merge is good at uh, uh, write. Uh, yes, it's true because the tuples are inserted in the RAM first, <laughs> okay. Uh, but bad in the read, this is not uh, exactly true because it has some uh, compaction process uh, to help. To in the background to help to improve the read performance. Uh, in addition, uh, there are mm, there are something uh, like called tail index, which has min mac index uh, and uh, bloom filter uh, to improve the read performance. So as long as you can, you are willing to sacrifice more RAM space, it's totally fine. <laughs> so what's the problem uh, with B plus tree here in this experiment? So even we are talking about the insurgent case in this experiment, uh, where the root cause comes from the uh, reading pattern of the B plus tree. And uh, because every insurgent of the B plus tree, it triggers the random reading uh, to locate the exact position of the B plus tree so that it can insert the tuple in there. Okay. Uh, when the data I I is la uh, large, especially larger than the RAM, okay, or the uh, operating system cache and the database uh, system cache, uh, and and then the uh, the the data is come not in the order of the primary key, and the previous the cache the disk process are kind of useless, and the cache doesn't play a very important role in this workload. So the root reason that B plus three uh, insurgent in this experiment it causes too many disk accesses. Okay. So before uh, digging into the solution part, uh, let's go through another very simple experiment, which is done in my laptop. Uh, uh, try to profile the sequential reading and random reading uh, with the magnetic disk, SD, and RAM. Okay. Uh, this number is kind of very general, and uh, especially in the, you, you can check in the magnetic disk part, the sequential reading uh, is much faster than the random reading. Okay, uh, but the, uh, the, 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 the case is happens in the SSD or RAM, okay? Uh, These numbers will, uh, will help us to understand the design of log structure merge tree. Okay, so finally comes to the solution part. So an obvious solution is that you can increase the uh, cache size, no matter in the operating system side or the database system as own cache. I don't think this will be a good approach uh, by simply increasing the size uh, serving for the insurgent workload. Okay, there are other workloads there. So another solution that uh, you can use the log structure merge tree. Okay, uh, because it's 
it uh, never touch the disk when ins uh, when insert a tuple, except that uh, you would put put the data into the right hand lock and do a group committing. Okay. And the ins lock structure merge tree it is actually using a tiered design, as indicating this graph. It has two pieces of part. So first part is the uh, RAM part, another part is the uh, disk part, or uh, SSD part. Uh, you, you can even mix them. So here is a more architectural view of lock structure merge tree. It's, it's specifically for the uh, implementation of LockDB and LevelDB. Still, you can observe there are two parts, uh, the RAM part and disk part. There are multiple components there. Uh, multiple table, immutable table, uh, tail index, uh, cache, SST. Okay. So the multiple table and immutable table, uh, they're actually the uh, data structure of the security list, uh, which is randomized data structure uh, with the complexity, insert complexity, uh, search complexity with log n. And the, the asset table in the disk part, uh, they actually contains the sorted key value pairs. Okay, I, I have to mention that the every component, no matter immutable table, mutable table, uh, or the asset file in the disk, uh, in uh, they are they are the key value pairs actually are sorted inside uh, this uh, component, but uh, they might have some, uh, but they might not be sorted across the different components. Okay, specifically, like for the uh, mutable table, it can have the key from A to Z, and the immutable table, it can have the same A to Z. There are some overlapping there. And for the L0 uh, in the disk, it's the same case. But uh, f starting from L1, at the, in this whole level, there will be no... Uh, uh, the, the key value pairs will be sorted across the entire level there. Uh, but still, they are, uh, they are not sorted across the different levels there, okay? So the last uh, important uh, advanced operation of the storage engine is a snapshot, which actually uh, constitutes uh, the basics of MVCC. Uh, to put it simply, the each tuple, inserted tuple, will coupled with a sequence number. Uh, then the sequence number is always increasing. Okay, uh, when users issue some queries like get and the it, uh, iterator range, range query, they will also attach a sequence number. So the tuples in the storage engine uh, with sequence number less than the sequence number given by the users will be visible to the users. However, the sequence number larger than the given sequence number by the user, then these tuples will be uh, um, ignored. Okay, the users cannot see these tuples. On the other hand, uh, each component in the lock structure merge tree it has uh, it has multiple ver version. Okay, so for example, in the multiple table, they, it has another uh, multiple table, uh, and uh, different uh, versions of the multiple, multiple table they get a reference count. So once the reference count uh, uh, gets to zero, then it means that hey, this multiple table I don't need it. I can delete it. Okay, uh, remember that uh, the tuple with the same key, it might have a different value. So the new key will override the old key there. So the multiple version here means uh, two parts. First is, hey, you might have different tuples, diff different versions of tuples. Another is that different component, it, have, it also can have multiple versions there. OK, so finally comes to the implementation part. Uh, we're actually using the foreign data wrapper approach to attach the RocksDB to uh, Postgres. And actually, you can simply cha change the code to attach LevelDB to, uh, uh, to Postgres. The uh, difficulty for us is that the, because the Postgres actually is uh, process-based, and uh, many storage engines, not only RocksDB, okay, uh, they, are, they are based on multi-threads. Okay, did, which this means that hey, uh, there are, if there are two processes to access the storage engine, uh, then to fail. So uh, we handle this by using a shared memory and uh, additionally spawn the uh, process. So specifically, uh, so the backend process, client process, uh, issue this select update SQL language, then they will send uh, the queries 
uh, via, our, via our shared memory and the spawn process. We'll get this data, uh, get this information from the shared memory, and then access the RocksDB. And we can also have make multiple threads in this spawn process uh, to access it uh, super to improve the performance. Okay. So uh, some current status, we actually have more things to do for uh, the implementation. So the currently, the engine cannot recognize, cannot natively support data types of Postgres. So uh, what we have to do is that, that we have to fetch the comparator functions from uh, catalogs like a uh, real cache, and then passing the comparator functions uh, down to the storage engine, and the storage engine can recognize, uh, can utilize the comparator functions. Okay, uh, then we are not sure about the front-end wrapper to what kind of level support transactions. Okay, please advise us if possible or not. But anyway, like sooner or later, we will uh, migrate uh, the approach to the table access method, uh, which is pluggable storage engine. Okay, and uh, we will also do some performance uh, improvement. Uh, as indicated in the first experiment, uh, the storage engine itself is much faster than the uh, uh, for another wrapper approach, okay, even though we have, uh, even though they have using the same uh, storage engine there, uh, the reason that uh, we're using a synchronized approach to transfer data via shared memory. If we're using an asynchronous method, we we are expecting it to be much faster there. So this list. Uh, shows what we are currently doing. So actually, we are designing a new data structure, and uh, it comes into four motivations. First, uh, the random read and write of RAM is two sometimes faster than the magnetic disk, but the magnetic disk part is more than 100 times cheaper than the uh, RAM, and the ratio of RAM disk is like 40 to 200 times larger than 1970s, when the B plus 2 is designed uh, so in our opinion, a good data structure uh, can aggressively using the RAM, okay? Uh, but when the data set size is very large, it can downgrade to the uh, disk performance. And uh, additionally, there are some new storage uh, choice comes up, uh, like non-volatile uh, RAM. So uh, I think a current a modern data structure can utilize uh, this kind of uh, storage choice there. I think the most important uh, one is that uh, the different data structures, they have different uh, trade-offs. Uh, this leading to the trade-offs in different storage engines and even the data systems there. Yeah. It puts a lot of expertise in the users uh, uh, to, to choose these different data uh, database systems, data tools, storage engines there. So we, uh, uh, a funny thing is that we come up with a user that um, uh, at first he was Postgres and then uh, uh, he uh, migrates to uh, to memo cache, okay, and uh, he thinks that Postgres is slow. And I ask him why uh, the why it's slow. I finally figure out that he forgets to build an index there, <laughs> okay. That's that, that's kind of very weird. Okay. okay, so I think uh, that's it. All the contents are there. So you can reach me via the email or. Uh, Twitter me, uh, even though I j previously I don't use Twitter, I just reopened Twitter, <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, you can see our progress uh, in our GitHub repository there, okay. So uh, thank you very much, uh, okay, stay safe. We're all right. And we're back. This is a Q&A session with Shakira. You go ahead. Okay, see, I see the question. So I guess the first question is, did you explore doing extension in Rust? Uh, not yet. Actually, there are more things to do in the extension. So we will put more work in the, to materialize the, to make the extension more mature. And then we'll probably do that. Okay. The second question is, have you tested with the version uh, 13 uh, and the B3 improvements that have been made to it? Uh, we haven't tested the, the uh, version 13, we tested with version uh, uh, 11, point 0.6 or point 0.7. Uh, but I think the problems comes from uh, the inherent uh, design of B plus tree. Uh, so even there's improvement there, uh, we can see like uh, 
there might be a difference, but the difference might be super big, okay? <laughs> Any, any other questions? Oh, so do you see a patch using LSM for Postgres uh, call or at least the contribution? Uh, actually, I haven't uh, checked that and uh, address Google search. I haven't found that. Okay, uh, then can you please explain more uh, about the handling concurrent reads and uh, MVCC? Uh, is the sequence number you mentioned a commit sequence number or something uh, else? Okay. Uh, this is a tough question. Uh, let me think about that. Uh, playing the uh, uh, currently the actually in our implementation, this there are two parts. First is the storage engine part, and then is the uh, Postgres part. We haven't changed any uh, Postgres part. Uh, we just put a, put a glue layer between the Postgres and the storage engine part. So the uh, sequence number and MVCC all comes from the uh, uh, storage engine itself, uh, the RocksDB, okay? Uh, so the storage engine itself uh, supports concurrent reads, but our implementation hasn't reached to that step. Uh, we can support concurrent reads, but currently just the one process, one thread. Okay? We, will, we can add a multi-thread to, uh, to implement the concurrent reads. And the MVCC is the design in the storage engine itself. So usually, it, a uh, multi uh, uh, SST file, it has multiple versions and then a record in that uh, storage engine has multiple uh, versions there. Is the sequence number you mentioned a commit sequence number or something else? Uh, the sequence number uh, uniquely identifies a tuple. Say that the tuple, it has multiple uh, versions, then each version has different sequence number. So this uniquely identifies a specific tuple. We our implementation currently hasn't utilizing the sequence number yet, so uh, we are wondering how the uh, final wrapper will uh, support the transaction. We have the investigate investigate that part. If if it's possible, then we will utilize the sequence number in our next phase. Okay. So how does another question is how does the FDW method foreign data wrapper method get the data into right hand log? Okay, so currently the, uh, there are actually two right hand locks in these systems. The first is Postgres, another is the storage engine's right hand lock. So I, I, I can uh, guarantee at this time that uh, we put the data into the right hand lock of the storage engine itself. Uh, in terms of the Postgres, uh, we are not sure about this point. Okay, uh, I think there's no other questions uh, there. I will ask. Okay, that's it. Did, did you see the question about how much of your extension will you submit to core? Okay, uh, submit to core. I have to figure out how the process to submit to core. We are willing to submit to core. And, uh, and uh, another problem is that the, the storage engine itself is uh, multi-thread based and the Postgres is kind of uh, uh, process based. Actually, there are tons of things uh, underneath uh, went, went through. So we are still in the development stage and uh, uh, we're definitely willing to submit that once after a little bit of mature. Right. Okay, that's all the questions, I think. Thank, okay, you, thank you very you much. much. Goodbye. Okay, have a nice day, bye.